Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and uh, today it is finally a beautiful sunny day again and it's time to test software update 2020.48.30 now while the sun is out and we are in winter that means that the sun is in a lower position I also cleaned the cameras before doing this test so any indication of poor visibility by the cameras is definitely caused by the sun and not by the cameras being dirty but let's find out how good this update is And as usual, we start with the hill crest and I'm interested in the downwards section where it loses the middle lane markings. Will it stick to the right side or will it start hunting for the middle of that uh, lane that gets narrower at that point? Let's see. Oh, that is just dead straight on. That is definitely an improvement over the last time that I tested this because then it was hunting for the center at the very last moment here it is just dead straight and uh, yeah finally this seems to be working fine great now here we have an interesting one so you see that broken sign up ahead um, it actually sees that as a traffic light and then it wants to brake for it but still continues so that is new if you drive a little bit slower if you go like 50 kilometers an hour it will actually stop for that uh, sign and then indicates it as a red light so yeah part of that is of course because um, the car is still stopping for green lights or for inactive lights at this moment in other cases uh, like in the US where already you continue on the green light automatically uh, this is no longer a problem but in our case it didn't used to react to that but uh, now it does so I'm going to leave some room for the cars in front of me for our next test point and our next test point is of course the S-curve now let's see if the car will slow down in this update no nope, it does not so what does it do goes over the line doesn't beep for the auto steer limited slows down again here onto the line and here this turn is okay but here oh it's braking for something perhaps that car that was parked on the right side so that was a small phantom brake but because of that the car was going slow enough to take that last turn without any problem all right let's see how it handles this on-ramp and whether it will still blink to go out of the first lane it's braking hard now I need to blink of course but there is a car coming behind me and that car is not moving but yeah right now at the end it is going on to the highway because it was just following that right lane marker and now it was blinking and continued to blink for going to the middle lane so yeah because of the UNEC regulations I was not able to merge into that first lane properly or sooner than what it did because the distance behind the car needed to be a lot more than what the guy behind gave me but nevertheless it still made it onto the highway automatically here we have the first double exit test point let's see if we still get a double movement to get into the proper exit lane so that's going smooth and a slight correction let's see for the second exit whether the correction is still as big as it used to be So here we go that's smooth so far yep and that second correction to get me into the exit lane 
So that still needs some work to be a lot more fluent. And here I'm just driving for 500 meters um, or in the opposite direction and all of a sudden I get the left door pillar camera blocked or blinded. So that's with the sun being on the left side of the car and immediately that means that I will not be able to do any lane changes, automatic lane changes to the left. Even navigate on autopilot is currently disabled. Now let's see if we can test the issue here when going to the right. So the truck is in the first lane, starting to merge now. And yeah, it turns red and only starts to merge after that, but it didn't move at first. So that's a slight difference. Now let me see if we can uh, redo that one more time to make sure that we get the proper situation. So here we have another truck. So let me initiate the lane change. It's moving, it's moving. Yep, and then cancelling and then moving back again. So no real changes on that front. And uh, the example earlier was just being lucky, I guess. Now, even with the sun almost in front of me, the left door pillar camera is still blocked. I keep getting that message. Navigate on autopilot is also not available at the moment. So yeah, that's uh, a bummer because that means I won't be able to test the auto exit taking. Now this is also an interesting one. Now I see the traffic light here, but on the other end of the street, that's just the same junction, the same intersection, but it detects the traffic lights on the other side of the street and then thinks those are a different set of traffic lights. And that is in general what I noticed with this update as well, is that the traffic light detection has gotten worse or it has gotten better at detecting where traffic lights are, but they're not applicable uh, at that point. So there's still a problem in detecting the ones that are actually applicable to my situation during driving. That is something that needs a lot of improvement. Here we have the section where it loses the lane markings altogether. So let's see how that goes. Oh, moves away for the car, moves away for the car, goes back, goes immediately to the side. So I do get the impression that it was not hunting for the middle of the lane, but moving away from the parked car actually. Now let's slow down for the intersection here. Okay. Speed up a little bit. That turn is also better. Because it's not cutting the corner and going through the center of the lane. So that's good. Let's see if I can keep this up all the way until the end. Slowing down again for the upcoming intersection here. Hopefully there's no car coming. All right. And I'll stick to 30 kilometers an hour to see if it will clear that uh, little plateau here in the center, that divider. Oh yeah. Oh, that was good. That was a lot better than the previous ones because for, with the previous ones, I never really had the nerve to let it do its thing. But this was taking more space on the left side. So yeah, I think that's definitely an improvement. Awesome. All right, time for another conclusion. So what do I think about this update? Well, let's start with the bad first. And that is that traffic light detection is definitely gotten worse. There are more cases where the other side of the intersection is considered to be a new traffic light and the car will stop for that. So that is not good. And it also detects more of the uh, road signs with some flashing lights, whether they're flashing or not, 
but they detect that as uh, a traffic light and will stop for that in several occasions. Now it's not all that consistent, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does, but uh, yeah, it didn't do that before this update. Now what's also still not good is the fact that it still doesn't slow down for the S-curve so that is still something that needs to be fixed and uh, we still get a lot of issues with the sun blinding the cameras. Most of the time is the left door pillar camera uh, message that I'm getting. Sometimes it's the right one but most of the time it's the left one. So maybe I need to have that checked out by Tesla as well, could be a fault in the cabling or maybe the filter or whatever but um, yeah it, it starts to become very apparent that the left side is more uh, susceptible to the sunlight than the right side. Now um, I've also this morning discovered that even though I preheated the car for more than 20 minutes the uh, door pillar cameras were still um, frozen over and that means that for 5 to 10 minutes of driving I could not use autopilot at that point. Um, so for me that still means that on my car, maybe the newer cars have better heating inside that door pillar for example, but on my car I do not believe that with the current hardware I will ever get to the point where it has full self-drive in all circumstances as Elon basically promises. But we'll see. Now for the good part, um, the downhill section on the first test point, that went dead straight for the very first time in years. So that is definitely an improvement also. And uh, another improvement was the last test point where uh, I really had the feeling I did it multiple times and the results were similar. I did get the feeling that the car was moving away from the parked cars and not really hunting for the center of that lane and as soon as the lane markings disappeared uh, from the parked cars the car moved to the side of the road and that was really good. Now also the final uh, part there with that uh, traffic plateau or that divider uh, in the middle it took um, a lot more space so I wouldn't really trust it on a daily basis but because it was a test point I was really vigilant about this and uh, in the previous updates I never trusted it fully to do it. Now it was a lot more confident and sure-footed to pass that uh, divider without actually a uh, chance of hurting my rims. And then a final point which is not in the video but uh, is definitely a big improvement. If you saw my last video about my commute there was this uh, highway exit that I needed to take south of Brussels. So it was a little bit too far to include it in this test. But uh, it went into the exit and then that exit is very very small. It just moved back into the lane. Now with this update it moves into the exit and it stays on the exit following the right lane marker and taking the exit very fluidly. So that is really really good. And for me that means that uh, yeah, there are quite a bit um, improvements here. Regression on the traffic lights, but uh, for driving itself I think there are quite a bit of improvements in this particular update. So there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.